Have you ever noticed politicians talking about a particular voting bloc? Or marketing executives talking about consumer segments? What about demographic groupings, such as millennials? How are the politicians and executives sure they have grouped people together properly? And how do they know who is in which group? One data reduction technique used to accomplish this is cluster analysis. K-means cluster analysis is a technique we use when we want to group multi-dimensional data along two or more dimensions. It will pick clusters to minimize within cluster variants and maximize between cluster variants. So what exactly does that mean? It's probably easiest to illustrate with an example. Let's start with a data set here. Let's say for a group of people, we have their household income. We know how much money they spent on children's toys last year. Assume we've scaled the data, so the lowest household income is zero and the highest is 100. Also, the lowest toy spending is zero and the highest toy spending is 100. In this graph, we see household income is along the x-axis here ranging from a low of zero to a normalized high of 100. We see that money spent on toys is along the y-axis, ranging also from a low of zero to a normalized high of 100. Now let's put our data on the graph. Each dot here represents one person. This dot here represents someone who had a household income of about 63 and spent about 40 on our toys. Remember, we've scaled our data. Our job here is to cluster the data the easiest way is to put everyone in one big cluster. While this is easy, it doesn't give us any more information about our marketing message or to whom we should sell. One big cluster is too few clusters. So let's say we try again and decide we're going to use many more clusters. We might have a graph that looks something like this. The problem with this is that now we have too many clusters. In this graph, there are 13. 13 is too many separate marketing campaigns to run and too many individual messages to craft. We can refine our problem a little bit more. We want to get the fewest number of clusters that will still give us good descriptions of our data. We want everybody in the same cluster to be similar to everyone else in that cluster. And we want the members of one cluster to be significantly different from those in a different cluster. Our ideal outcome looks something like this. Here, we have three clusters, which feels reasonable and manageable. On the top left, we have people who don't have a very large household income, but nevertheless spend a lot of money on toys. On the bottom center, we have people with a higher household income, but they're not spending very much of it on toys. And on the top right, we have what we might be looking for. This is a group of people with larger household incomes who are spending a lot on toys. Of course, we may want to entice them to spend even more. We could put all this information together in a table. Here, you see cluster one has an average household income of 25, an average toy spending of 70. What do you do with the data once you have your clusters? For each cluster, you can then run other analyses. For example, in our toy purchase data set, you might then run a query to figure out how many children were in each household or the average age of the household. We see here that cluster one has an average of 2.5 children in the household and an average age of 31. Does that mean everybody in that cluster is 31 years old? Of course not, but on average they are. These look like young families. Cluster two also has children in the household, albeit slightly fewer, and they are slightly older. You could extrapolate that cluster two is probably harboring teenagers. And cluster three is significantly older. Their average age is over 60, and they don't seem to have many children living with them. Putting this all together, we are now in a position to give nicknames to each cluster. Cluster one could be young families. They may not have a very high household income just yet, but what money they have, they spend on toys. It is possible they have younger children, elementary school age and younger. Cluster two could be mid-career professionals. Their household income is higher, but they are not spending as much on toys. It is possible they have teenage children in the home, and teenagers want cell phones instead of toys. Cluster three could be the wealthy grandparents. Their household income is relatively high, and they don't have children in the home. But perhaps their very first grandchild has arrived, and the sky is the limit on toy purchases. 
From here, you would have the information you needed to decide which market segment to pursue. You would advertise differently to young families than you would to wealthy grandparents. And best of all, you can do it with the confidence that your data is supporting these particular divisions. It is with this technique that politicians and executives can group people of similar views together. It's how they group demographic segments, such as millennials. So to recap, when you want to make groups out of your data, you can use k-means clustering. What do you need in order to use this algorithm? First, you need a data set with all the information in it. Second, you need to know what your axes are. For this example, we use two axes, household income and amount of money spent on toys. You could also cluster on three, four, or more dimensions. And finally, you need to know how many clusters you want. Sometimes there will be a hard cap. Marketing may say they can handle at most five segments. Other times, you may want to let the software tell you how many clusters are the best for your data. So that's how clustering analysis is done. Thank you for watching.